Hey, this is Matt Ting from Peak Frameworks. And today I'm gonna to teach you a quick mathematical tool that you can use to conduct paper LBOs as well as forecast out other numbers. You can use this tool with the logic that we taught in the paper LBO video to properly do pretty much any kind of investment question. Now the rule of 72 is a mathematical formula that we can use to estimate how long it takes for something to double at a compound growth rate. So if there is an investment or an asset that is growing at a compound growth rate every single year, we can use the rule of 72 to see how long it takes for that investment to double. So to use the rule of 72, it's literally just simple division. We take 72 and we divide by the number of time periods. For example, if we are looking at an investment that doubles over the course of five years, we're going to do 72 divided by five, which is about 14% and the actual IRR or the compound growth rate is 15%. Just to give another quick example, let's say we are investing in a business and the value of the business doubles over the course of 10 years. Here we'll do 72 divided by 10, and when we divide that, we get 7.2%, and that would be our implied IRR or return on the business. And the actual IRR is actually close to 7%. So it really is the simple. You just do 72 divided by the time period, and that gets you to the implied compound growth rate. So one thing about this growth rate is that it is a compound growth rate. So in this example, over the course of 10 years, that means it's 7% every single year, and it's compounding over the annual value. And you can apply the rule of 72 for anything. It's not a finance specific phenomenon, it's a mathematical one. So we can really apply this formula to anything that grows. We can apply it to population or EBITDA or even Instagram followers. Anything that is growing at a compound rate, we can use to approximate using the rule of 72. Now there's two other abstractions I wanna talk about. The first is the rule of 114. It's the exact same premise, but this is what you use when assets or investments triple over a certain time frame. Just to be explicit, let's say we have an investment that triples over the course of six years. Well, here we would do 114 divided by six, which is the time periods of six years, and that brings us to 19. And 19 is a very close approximation. The actual IRR is 20%. Again, we can also invert this. We can do 114 divided by a specific percentage, and that gets us to the number of years that it will take to triple. And the final abstraction is really just a double of rule of 72. It's the rule of 144, which of course is just doubling twice. So if we wanna know how long it'll take for something to quadruple, we'll just take 144 and divide that by the compound growth rate to get to an implied time period. So with these three rules, 72, 114, and 144, you can pretty much do every paper LBO and also quickly compare different asset classes. If you don't wanna do mental math, I would recommend you memorize some of the key numbers and you can check out this chart on our blog that talks about all three of these rules, the actual IRR and what the implied IRR is from these rules. So let's go over a couple of slightly trickier examples to make sure you know what's going on. So let's say we have a portfolio company and the portfolio company's EBITDA is growing annually at 8%. How long does it take for the company's EBITDA to double? So let's do a quick pause here and then we'll go over the answer. So here we're told that EBITDA is growing 8% every single year. That's the same thing as a compound growth rate. So we can just do 72 divide by eight. That is equal to nine years. So theoretically, the EBITDA of this portfolio company is going to double over the course of nine years. So for a second question, let's say we invested $250 million into a business. If this grows to $750 million over the course of 10 years, what is the implied IRR? So we'll do another quick pause and then dive into the answer. So here you have to do one more step. You have to divide those numbers. So 750 divided by 250, that's three times. That's three times MOM, and it's also a tripling of the initial investment. So here we're gonna use the rule of 114. Over the course of 10 years, that's 114 divided by 10, which is 11.4% as the implied IRR, and the actual IRR is 12%, so honestly pretty close. Why do these mathematical proofs work? I do not know, but it also does not really matter for our practical purposes. So let's close with a very simple paper LBO, and if you're having difficulty with this question, I would recommend you watch our other video that really dives into this. But let's say we acquire a business at five times EBITDA with half debt and half equity, and that the business has $10 million in EBITDA. Now, at the end of 10 years, we decide to exit the business at the same entry multiple. We've also paid down all our debt, and EBITDA has doubled. Now I wanna ask you, how much has our investment grown over these 10 years, and what's the implied IRR? So let's take another brief pause, feel free to use pen and paper for this, and then we'll dive into the answer. So first things first, at entry, we're gonna take the five times multiple and multiply that by $10 million in EBITDA, 
which gets to an enterprise value of $50 million. So we're gonna do half debt and half equity. So half of that or 25 million is debt and 25 million is equity. So that means we invest $25 million into the business. Now, the other part of this question is to understand what happens at exit. And a couple of things happen. So the first thing is that EBITDA doubles. So it goes from $10 million to $20 million in EBITDA. We're told that we exit at the same multiple that was the entry multiple, which was five times. So we do five times 20, which gets us to $100 million in enterprise value. And we are also told one more thing, which is that debt is paid down. That means the enterprise value of $100 million is what goes to us as equity investors. So if our initial investment is 25 million and it grows to 100 million over the course of 10 years, that means we've quadrupled over the course of 10 years and that we can employ the rule of 144. So we simply do 144 divided by 10, that's 14.4% implied IRR. And the actual IRR is about 15%. So again, this is a very close approximation. And that's really it for this rule. I think it's extremely useful if you're going to be recruiting for private equity, or if you really just need to understand investments and asset classes in a more intuitive way. So if you are trying to recruit for private equity or would like to learn more about paper LBOs and LBO modeling, you should check out the course on our website at peakframeworks.com. Thanks for watching this video and I will see you in the next one.